Welcome everyone. We're excited to have you here at, at another webinar here with Mozenda. And let's just give a couple minutes for everyone to join. And like we always like to do, I I'd like to see where you're from and, and your name. So if you could go ahead and just chat us in your name and where you're from. We'll give a couple minutes to everyone else who's just joining a little bit late. All right, looks like we have some people joining here. We have from San Diego, from South Dakota, a couple from Canada, Texas. Let's give a couple more minutes here. All right, from Atlanta, some more from Texas. Well, welcome, everyone. We are excited to be here with you. My name is Reggie Collins, and I am the marketing manager here at Mozenda. And let's go ahead and introduce the team that I have with me. So with me on the call today, or on this webinar, I have Kenneth Bedwell, who is a lead technical consultant, and I'm sure many of you have talked with him before. He is an expert at the Mozenda tool, so we're excited to have him here with us. Let's go ahead and go over the agenda. So today, we'll be talking a little bit about our new feature, which is the cookie stores. We'll talk to you about what it is, what it allows you to do, and we'll show you some examples. And at the end of all of that, we will go ahead and have a question and answers at the end. So during the webinar, if you have questions, please feel free to send those in to us. We have someone on, on the, the chat feature that will message you back and um, get back to you then. And we'll also include some of those towards the end of the webinar. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Kenneth to take it away from here. Go ahead, Kenneth. Thanks, Reggie. Um, welcome, everyone. I'm uh, really excited to introduce this uh, new feature that we just rolled out with. You'll notice as we kind of go through that this new feature is going to allow uh, it kind of expands the horizons of uh, Mozenda, what we're able to uh, get to, what sites we're able to scrape and, and to uh, do within those sites as well. So uh, before we actually get started, I want to talk a little bit about, so before I talk about the actual feature itself, I want to talk about what cookies are and kind of highlight that and then we'll go into the feature. So a cookie is a piece of information that's stored within your browser. So it, it acts as like some information as a, an identification card or history of what you've done on that particular site. Uh, for example, like an email address when you sign in uh, with a username and password, that email, that session, the, the site remembers your username and password as you've signed in. So next time that you visit that site, your browser will send that stored information to the website, then enabling the website to remember you and provide a better browsing experience. So cookies can be used to save your session or your preferences or progress in filling out forms, even personalized information and other information to improve your experience. So and we're going to go through a couple of examples of this, but Mozinda's new cookie store feature allows you to save your cookies for later use in building and running your agents. So basically, as the website recognizes your cookies and restores your session information and preferences, your agent design can be simplified. For some websites, this can be used to collect data from the website without having to sign back in. And we're going to go through the first example will be of this. So what does this really allow you to do? There's three big use cases for this. So the first use case is for sites where you log into, and this is some websites, where you log into that use two-factor authentication. So, for example, where you have to uh, log into the username and password and then put in a, a verification code that might be sent to your phone or to another email or, or whatever. The second use case is for logging into some sites that use CAPTCHA validation. So, an example of this would be logging to a site and then you have to validate it with some sort of CAPTCHA, you know, aligning the pictures or typing in the numbers that you see on the page. So, and finally, uh, my favorite use case for this is collecting personalized data, such as from shopping carts and order histories. So this one's going to be really cool, and I'm going to show you uh, an example of this. So something to remember about this cookie store feature, and just cookies in general, cookies do have an expiration date based off of the website. So, and you can use them in your agent until they expire. So once your cookie expires, your agent may no longer be able to use the cookie that was stored. So you'll have to basically recreate the cookie. And I'm gonna show you this whole process and, and it's pretty simple. And um, then we can go into some questions at the end of it. So the first thing, uh, the first example I wanna use here. So 
In the first example, I'm going to use the cookie store feature to log into an email that requ requires two-factor authentication. So I'm just going to go to my Mozenda mail. and sign in normally. Now you'll notice, first thing I want to point out is I'm not starting a new agent from this page because I want to save that cookie, that, that piece of information, that identification card. So I'm going to sign into my email. Okay. And just kind of go through the whole process. Um, so here, I'm going, so once I'm signed in, I have now have cookies, a session stored on this particular browser. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save my cookies. So save this session, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to click select Save Cookies, and I'm going to name it. And the name will be, I'm just going to call this Email1. It doesn't matter the name. Okay, and then from this point, I can say Save and Start Agent. Okay, and you'll notice that what Mozenda does is it executes this new action that we've uh, created, that Mozenda's created here called load cookies and with the name email one, and then loads the page of my, uh, my email account. And then here I can start creating actions, click items. Uh, you know, I can click in here or go here and say, let's do a click item and hit inbox like that. Uh, there's just a, a list of things I can do. So let's, Let's assume that I want to start fresh and use on a different agent a cook, this cookie store feature that I have, I have my login credentials again. What I can do is, what, or what I should do, is I want to start from the Mozenda, the, the home page inside the builder. So I'm going to go to start a new agent from this page. Now I'm going to go up to add action and then load the cookie store. This is the new feature right here. I, Mozinda will then take me to my cookie store and I'll see my email one here. I'll select email one and then select OK. All right, the next step is I need to go to the destination page, not the sign in page, but the destination page of where you've already logged in, so your mail account. So I'm going to go to that page, so I need to do a load page action. And I'm going to take that URL from my account and paste it in. Once I've pasted in my URL, I'm going to say add page. You'll notice right off the bat, it took me back to the sign in page. The reason why is because the load cookies action has not been executed yet, and that's okay. When I say test my agent, this is how I can execute this action. Now I successfully logged back into my page. I can do this for other agents. Now once again, remember that this cookie may expire over uh, a set amount of time based on the website. So, so this may vary. So this about wraps up this first example. Uh, I want to go into another example of using the cookie store feature inside of uh, or for gathering personalized data within a shopping cart. So we're going to go to a retail a retail site and put two items in a shopping cart. Now the purpose of this is I want to track these item prices within the cart over time and use Mozinda's feature store item history to see if uh, prices have changed or the quantity has changed over time. So, but first I need to be able to put those in the cart and save that cookie that cookie session so I can use it for future purposes. So what I'm going to do first, similar to the first example, is I'm going to go to the target or the destination page. So in this example, I already have the URLs that I'm going to go to. You don't need to do this. You can actually go and find items you want as like you are normally navigating through a regular browser. But to uh, simplify this, I'm just going to ahead and pasting in these URLs and then going to add them to the cart. The number of items that you do doesn't matter unless the site restricts an amount of items that you can put into a certain cart. So in this first example, I'm going to grab a uh, driver and I'm going to add it to the cart. Okay. 
Okay, so once this has been added to the cart, I'm just going to continue shopping. Once again, I'm not starting my new agent from this page yet. I'm not doing any of that. So I'm going to grab my, uh, I have another URL I'm using, so we're going to do two products here. Perfect. Okay, so we're at this page, and I want some golf balls to go with it. Okay, so it's added it to my cart, so it added a cart, so I'm going to go to my cart right now. And from this point, I can say, save cookies. All right, and we're going to call this cart one, and then select save and start agent. You'll notice that Mozilla generates the load cookies, cart one action, and then the load page that takes me to the cart. Once I'm inside my cart, I can then capture, let's go back to the cart, capture my price, and also whether it is in stock. Uh, stock. I can also get the name of the item, other information, I can click into the item, and, and so on, and see if it's free shipping. So uh, a really good use case for this I thought of the other day is, um, so items in cart, the price may change, but if you, I, for a lot of websites, um, the price usually will not stay the same because that's that represents the time you put that item inside of the cart. So let's say, for example, you wanted to track this item over time and see how many times or when it was in stock for during a particular time. So you checked it once a month, and if it was in stock, you could know, okay, this item is in its stock, and it's at this price that I collected it when it was on sale or whenever, whatever time you decided to get it at. So that's kind of a, a cool little feature um, that I uh, plan on using as well for some particular use cases. Now, let's, uh, just like in the other example, let's say that you wanted to use your cart, and you decided you wanted to add some more items to it, and you did that, um, but you wanted to build a new agent using this load cookies action here. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And first I need to get my uh, cart URL. Or forget it. I'm just going to put it on the side here. Okay, so we're going to close down this agent. Close. Say no. And similar to the previous example, we're going we're to start from the Mozinda homepage and just say start a new agent from this page. The next step is to replicate what we saw before, is to add action, and then select Load Cookie Store. And we have the cart one that appears there. Here, I can edit the name or I can delete it as well, but I don't want to do either of those. I'm going to select it and then select OK. So once this is done, I can now perform a load new page that will take me to my cart. Okay, once that is uh, pasted in, I'm going to just say add page. All right, once again, you'll notice that it says there are zero items in my cart. The reason why is because the load cookie action has not been executed. In order to execute it, we need to test the agent, and it will execute it and take me to the page. So let's do that. I'm going to go up and select test agent, and then start. You'll notice that once I've done this, it takes me to my cart, and I now have the two items, and I can I can see uh, my actions here or my uh, items here, and I can then build my agent. So that that about wraps up this particular example. Um, I think at this time we're going to take a couple questions. Excellent, thanks, Kenneth. This has been this has been great. So let's go ahead and look at some of these questions that have been coming in. Uh, here's here's the first question: Can you with the cookie stores? use parameters within it? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So in order, so let's, uh, let's kind of start over to, let's start from a fresh agent to uh, answer this question. So to answer this question uh, flat out, the answer is yes, you can do this through the store ID inside of the properties of a stored cookie. So let me show you this uh, and, th and then it'll make more sense. So when you're putting in a parameter, what you mean by that is, I, I think you're meaning you want to put in, for example, uh, let's let's pretend, let's assume you're you want to you have multiple login credentials for a particular site, and so you want the stored cookie to be able to go in and put multiple logins that you've of cookies that you've sessions that you've already saved. So to do this, 
what you're going to do is we're just going to say start uh, start a new agent and then we're going to go and do our load cookie store and then we'll just select the email one uh, cookie and from this point I'm going to go to my properties and then here is my store ID at the top left I can then so it gives it an, an ID number however if you're putting in a parameter just like any parameter in Mozinda you can put in you put it in between two percent signs so if you but you need to have a data list that is attached to this agent as well of the multiple username and passwords that you wish to put in so for this example I want to you know I have my uh, let's assume that I have a data list of the username and passwords of these cookies and I they were called um, emails and so I'm going to put in my parameter called email and this will put each individual username and password into the particular website you're wishing to log into once you've created so obviously you see you save it and then you'd add a load a new page that would take you to the destination page similar to what we were doing before but this time you have the parameter and then you would test the agent to verify and validate that this was working I don't want to go into too much more detail about this in the webinar if you have more questions about this feel free to reach out to either the support team or your technical consultant and we can go into more detail and show you um, how this works with web the web console but the idea is it is possible and from the builder this is how you would do it from the properties in the store ID all right thanks Kenneth let's see here let's take a look at these questions here's a question does the cookie store affect your storage at all yeah that's a great question so the cookie store it does store you're storing a, a session or a text or data inside of Mozenda inside of your uh, web console so yes it does affect but it's not enough to for you to notice and here's a great question so how do you know if your cookie is expired perfect so typically there uh, you'll see kind of a different amount uh, of things there isn't a, an exact answer to this but the the best way is to um, if your agent is set if the error handling settings of the uh, harvesting settings is set properly inside of your web console so not inside the agent builder but the web console the agent will error out you may see an element not found error but this element not found won't be from the load cookies it will be from your first action of the load page so remember so going back to the screen here I have my load cookies just like a lot of the other sites where we had the load cookies then a load new page with uh, some sort of URL attached to it and so and then on page two we were able to see we had you know we had an action so we'll just say uh, we'll just call this action here so typically what you would see in this particular example is an element not found on the capture the first capture called action the reason why is because it wouldn't be able to find this action because the cookies expired excellent well I think that is all the time we have for questions right now but we thank you for joining us thank you for being a Mozenda customer if you have questions please feel free to reach out to us we're here to help you we can schedule trainings you can call support and we can get those questions answered so thanks for joining us and we'll see you on the next webinar